In this lab, I want to take a look at how to set up and use a rolling cylinder in cylinder joint. Before we get started on this, let's go back to the assembly environment. And so to create the gear set, I went to the design tab and I selected spur gear and make sure that you check mark this internal to create the internal gear. I also turned on the visibility of the pitch diameters and we saw how to do that in a previous lab if I open one of the part files I'll right click on that surface body and turn on the visibility of that pitch diameter and then constrain as desired and we only have these two parts uh, not the corresponding part that would hold this in the assembly but I have put three mates on this part to constrain that to the origin it could be that this one is free to move and this one is constrained or both of them are free to rotate so several different variations of how you could set this up and we'll look at two different variations and so I'll go into the dynamic simulation environment and I have turned off the automatic conversion except for the planer so I have a planer joint that will hold this yellow spur gear from translating along in this case the y-axis and I have then this part is in the the grounded group so the larger one is in the grounded group and I also set that sub assembly as flexible back in the assembly environment so these two components need to be set as flexible as a sub assembly so that they can move I'll then add my rolling cylinder on cylinder and that is found under the rolling joints and notice that it tells me to select the outer component first I think that's probably the thing that gives people the most trouble is they don't pay attention to which one of these they need to select in what order also you need to select whether you need a tangency or only one constraint in this case I have this gear with only the planar joint on here so it's free to move along that plane so I also want to put it as tangent so I'll select the first cylinder for the outer component and I select the circle on the pitch diameter actually you could select the circle or you could select the cylinder if I select the circle it's going to define the origin at the same time as the center of that circle and actually let's select this one back here although it doesn't really matter so I'll, I'll select the center of that circle and then I'll go to the second cylinder the internal component and I'll select this circle on the pitch diameter for that circle and I'll say OK to that now if I try to drag this we see that it rolls along that cylinder so it's a rolling cylinder in cylinder so this cylinder is rolling inside of this cylinder and so this would be a common mechanism for a planetary gear system so you may have two or three more planets in here and then the sun gear and depending on whether you drive the sun gear or you drive the ring gear uh, you get your different gear ratios I want to look at this in a different way though so rather than having cylinders with teeth on them I have two cylinders without any teeth but one ro cylinder rolls against the other cylinder and in this case the yellow cylinder is set in position where it doesn't translate but it does rotate and then the larger blue ring cylinder rotates as the yellow roller is rotated so let's look at how to set this up so I'm going to start a new metric part file and I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane I'll draw a circle of diameter 100 millimeters and I'll draw a second circle of a diameter 75 millimeters I'll also draw a construction line at the origin and I will draw that construction line up to the 12 o'clock position at the first circle and the second circle so I put this in as two separate lines let's change those to construction lines and then going to do a center point slot so I'll find the slot uh, center point I'm going to put the center point at the midpoint of this line and I'm going to come out and about like that and then I'll dimension this let's say this is two millimeters and let's say the height of that slot is 7.5 I'll finish my sketch and I will save this let's call this outer cylinder ring 
I will then extrude this and I'm going to select this area and I'm going to select this area in here and I will go mid plane a distance of 20 millimeters. I'll then make that sketch visible again and I will do an extrude of the slot. I will tell it to go through all mid plane and do cut say okay to that. I'll turn off the visibility of that sketch. I then want to do a circular pattern of that second extrusion so I'll do a circular pattern. I'll select that feature. I'll select the z-axis and I'll put in 20 copies. I'm going to change the color of my part. I'm going to set mine as blue. You can set yours to whatever color you want. And I'll also change the color of that extrusion. So I'm going to right click on that extrusion. I'll go to the properties of that extrusion and I'm going to set that as red. Again you can set that as whatever color you want. And I want to pick up that color and put it on this circular pattern. So I could either pick it up with the eyedropper or I could right click on the pattern. I'll pick it up with the eyedropper with my paint bucket I'll drop it on that pattern say okay to that so that completes my first component I'll then start a new metric part file and I will start a new sketch on the XY plane I'll draw a circle at the origin I'll dimension this circle as a diameter of 25 and I will uh, then do a center point slot and I'll make that vertical about like that and then I'll make a horizontal center point slot. I'll do equal, make this radius equal to this radius and this center line equal to this center line. I'll then do dimension and I'll dimension that width as 4 and I'll dimension the center to center distance as 17 and then I'll do extrude and I'm going to do this as two steps so I'll extrude the circle first and I'll I'll do mid plane a distance of 20. I'll make that sketch visible and I'll do extrude again and this time I'm going to select uh, this slot and I actually want to get the edge of the slot so that it selects that entire slot so I'm going to do that again so I'll do extrude and I'll get that slot and I'll get this slot I'll tell it to go through all mid plane and do cut I'll turn off the visibility of that sketch I will change the color of this part so I'm going to change mine to yellow you can use whatever color that you like and I want to change this inside feature to a different color too so that's why I did it separately rather than one extrusion it will be easier to select that as a feature and I'll change that to some other color I'm going to use black and I'm also going to turn on the visibility of the z-axis and I'll save this file and then I've started a new assembly file the outer cylinder ring and I'll right click place that grounded at the origin and then I'll do place again and I will get the part that we just created and I call that inner cylinder roller and I'll click someplace on the screen to place that now again, if we want this to show up when we open up the file, say in this orientation, I can right click here and I'll set that current view as my home position. And so that way when I open it up, it'll always come in at that home position, whatever it is. I want this part to be able to move and right now it's grounded. So I'm going to unground this part and then I'm going to constrain the axis, the Z axis of this part to the assembly. So I'll do constrain and I'll get the Z axis of the part to the z-axis of the assembly so now I can rotate that but it also translates so I want to remove the translation so I'll do constrain and I'll put it on flush the XY plane of the assembly to the XY plane of the part and now when I drag this it only rotates it doesn't translate I want to set this on the XY plane as well so I'll expand that part expand the origin and I'll do constrain flush the XY plane of the inside roller to the XY plane of the assembly and then I'm going to constrain this face tangent to that face so I'll do constrain tangent and I'm going to set it on this inside option I want this face tangent to the inside face of the blue part and I'm going to drag this down into this area right in here I want this axis to temporarily be constrained on the YZ plane. So I'll do constrain. I'll select the YZ plane of the assembly and I'll select the axis of this part and I'll say okay to that. So now this part rotates here but it doesn't translate or it also doesn't rotate around this axis but in a few minutes I do want it to rotate around that axis but first I need to find what that distance is from here to here 
and so I'm going to do measure on the inspection tab and I'm going to set this to all decimals and so the distance from this axis to this axis is 25 millimeters. I'll turn on the visibility of the XZ plane and I'm going to create a plane offset from that minus 25 millimeters. I'm then going to create a constraint between this offset plane and the axis of the yellow part and then I want to create a constraint through the YZ plane of this part and the YZ plane of the assembly. And so I'll come over, I'll find the YZ plane of this part and put that on flush and the YZ plane of the assembly. So that lines that up. Now those last three constraints that I created are just for home positions that we may use here in a few minutes. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of this plane. I'll turn off the visibility of this work plane that we made and I'm going to go to the relationships folder. I'll change a few of these constraint names. So this was the axis to YZ plane. I want this actually for this roller eventually to be able to move but initially we'll leave it in that position. So I'm going to leave that one on for now and then the offset plane that we made and then the axis or the constraint to that plane and if I test this out right now it doesn't rotate. Let's change this one to a home position. So I'm going to call this one home position 1 and then I'm going to suppress this home position. Now if I suppress this and I try dragging this part I see that this part rotates. This part, if I try dragging it, we see that it rotates. So I have a degree of freedom rotation for each one of these parts. I'll then go into dynamic simulation. So I'll go to environments, dynamic simulation, and I need to turn on the conversion. It is turned on, so I need to determine why those two parts are still grounded. I expect those two to be in the mobile groups since they can rotate. And so I'm going to right click on this outer cylinder ring and I'm going to tell it to retain degrees of freedom. And when I do, it moves that from the grounded group into the mobile group. I'm going to right click on the inner cylinder roller and I'm going to select retain the degrees of freedom on that part. When I did that, it just swapped the outer cylinder ring with the inner cylinder ring. So let's go back to the assembly environment for a minute and I'm going to find that tangent constraint and I'm going to to suppress that tangent and then I'll go to dynamic simulation and I'll right click on this part and I'll select retain degree of freedom and now we see both of those are in the mobile group. So I right clicked on both of these parts and I did retain degrees of freedom and that put a revolution joint on these parts. So sometimes Inventor tries to help you uh, in thinking that you want that part to be grounded and we have to expressly tell it to retain a degree of freedom. I'm going to go to the joint table and I'll select a rolling cylinder in cylinder. It tells me to select the outer component first so we need to make sure that we select the outer component first and I can either select this face or I can select this edge and it's going to determine the ratio between these two rollers by where we select. So I select it on the inside not on the outside. Outside. I'll go to component number two and I'll select this cylinder and I only need one constraint because they're already tangent and it can't move away from that tangency so I'll tell it one constraint otherwise it will give me an error saying that it's over constraint I'll do one constraint rolling I'll say okay to that so now when I rotate this it rotates with the correct ratio between the size of these two cylinders if I want to play that, I can find the revolution joint for this yellow roller and I'll go to properties and it has one degree of freedom rotational. I'll enable impose motion. I'll do a constant value of 360 degrees per second and let's play that for five seconds. And so the yellow roller drives the blue roller. If I turn on the output grapher and I go to the standard joints and the revolution if I want to see the velocity, graph the velocity of the first one and I'll graph the velocity of the second one and if I want to set these colors up this one is turning 360 degrees per second this one is 120 so I'll change those colors up to match the parts that so we saw before if we go to curve properties I can change that color to a, a yellow color for the curve and I'll change the color of this one so let's go back to the curve 
properties again. So on the red one this time I want to change that to blue. Do go to curve properties and I'll change this to blue color so that the graph curves match our part colors. Play that. So 360 degrees per second for the yellow roller. And then the 120 for the blue roller. On this one, both of these parts rotate. And I'll finish dynamic simulation and I'll do save as. And I'm going to call this alternate problem 2. And I will go to my relationships. And for this constraint, I'm going to suppress this one as well. And then I will leave that flush and suppress this one. I'll leave that tangent. And then let's go to back to dynamic simulation. So I'll go to dynamic simulation, rewind it. And so now I see that I have a planar joint for this yellow part. So it can move uh, anywhere. Actually, let's delete this, delete the rolling cylinder. Okay, now this part can move anywhere inside, can even go outside so it can go through the part. But let's put the rolling cylinder joint back in there again and this part rotates around that axis so I'm going to insert joint I'll do rolling cylinder in cylinder but this time I'm going to put the tangent constraint on there to because we don't have that already set permanently tangent so I'll select this face and I need to do that in the right order so I did that in the wrong order so I'll control unselect that face and then I will, for the first cylinder, I'll select this face, the outer component. For the inside component, I'll select this face, and I have it set on tangent. I'll say OK to that. It moves it over to where it's tangent. And now this part rotates and this part rotates. So we may have a mechanism where we have to set this up in such a way that both of these parts are able to rotate. But as one part rotates, this will roll on the second part. So that's rolling cylinder in cylinder.